goodness, Final Cut Pro is coming to the iPad. This is a day that I never thought I would actually see coming. A few weeks ago, I tweeted about wanting an update to Final Cut, but this was not at all what I had in mind. I basically just kind of wrote this off as something that was maybe never going to happen. But the day is here. Well, it's not actually here yet. It'll be out May 23rd. When I woke up and saw the email of the press release of this iPad Final Cut news, I honestly thought I was dreaming and I had to double check multiple sources to make sure that this was information that was public, that was known to everyone. Is this actually real? Am I dreaming? But my friends, it is as real as real could get. And I actually got a chance to test it out hands on and it was pretty impressive. I didn't really get enough time to really form a full opinion or do an actual review, but you better believe as soon as I get it, I will be diving in and learning as much as I can. I mean, just the few minutes that I was using it, it's incredibly intuitive. It is basically Final Cut reimagined, but for the iPad. So there are some new features that they did announce inside of here. So the entire editing space, it's all touch-based. You drag and drop, you pinch to zoom. There's also this cool thing, live drawing. Now obviously with the iPad, you can use an Apple Pencil. So it really is a different style of editing when you have a touch environment. So it is something that if you're not familiar with it, it will take a little bit of getting used to, but just spending a short time with it, like you're gonna pick it up very, very easily. The live drawing is pretty interesting. This gives you the ability to go in, use your Apple Pencil, draw, and then when you go back to the timeline, you'll be able to make this longer or shorter. So if you do need to stretch that out longer to cover a bigger chunk of your video, you can do that as well. You can obviously edit HDR. There's an iMovie import. So if you did start a project already in iMovie, you'll be able to import that. And again, Apple Pencil and keyboard support. The one thing that was like a big question that I had was will I be able to start a project on my iPad, send it to my Mac, and then send it back to my iPad. No, you will not be able to send a project back from your Mac to the iPad. So that is one thing that I feel like if you are starting a project and you wanna send it to your Mac, just know that you're not gonna be able to take it back to the iPad. Basically everything is self-contained inside of the library, so you aren't able to use external drives, so you do have to copy and import any of the footage onto your iPad. So if this is something that you do plan on doing and using, you definitely will need to have an iPad that has significant amount of storage, especially if you're editing larger projects. Now, multicam editing is also something that you can do in here, and it's so intuitive. Like it's just, I love using the multicam editor in Final Cut Pro. I use it all the time. So here in the multicam, they have three scenes plus an audio track. And with this, you'll be able to solo out the audio track and then have the video switch in sync with the audio. And inside of the timeline, you will just click which angle you want. And with that, for videos that have multiple cameras, you'll be able to quickly edit those. I just could not do without multicam. So when I discovered that, it honestly was pretty life changing. This isn't something that's totally new because you can't do this in regular Final Cut, but it's just showing the power of the M1 and M2 iPads to give you this capability of reframing things for a different frame. So if you have a 16 by nine and you wanna reframe that into a vertical for social, it makes it super easy to do that. This is also something that I tried very quickly at the end of my demo and then I had to give the iPad back, but this is a scene removal mask and this is, honestly pretty impressive. You'll be able to completely remove the background and just have your subjects in frame. You'll see in this demo, they removed him from the background and then placed him into this background. And magically, hello, you don't even need a green screen anymore, which is pretty awesome. Another thing that's not super new, but they did launch this, I don't even remember when, it was, it was a little while ago at this point, voice isolation. And this is pretty impressive. I use this in almost all of my videos and you kind of have to find the sweet spot depending upon what type of audio you're working with. This really does isolate your voice. It takes out a lot of background sound and I love using this so it's great to see it's also in the iPad and of course we've got titles transitions and effects and you know some of these are pretty basic I'm not sure when but I am fingers crossed hoping that sometime soon they will offer third-party support with third-party plugins because I obviously have my M keynote plugin that I made with motion VFX and I use it all the time and it's kind of like a staple in my editing is having these plugins and everything is all custom to my liking but for a lot of people who are just getting started and if you just need basic titles, like you have everything right here at your fingertips. 
They do have some new themes, which is nice because I feel like if you've been using Final Cut for a while, you have probably used all of those titles and transitions and effects pretty much to death. Here's some of the effects. I did get a chance to test this out. It was really cool how fast and effective they all were. This is something cool that they're doing with music. They're able to intelligently adjust the length of the audio to fit however long your video is. So if you have like a 10 second video, you can drag the audio to 10 seconds and it'll automatically fit that. But if you have a longer than that, like a five, 10 minute video, you can drag it all the way and it just kind of reframes itself to make a perfect seamless audio track, which normally, I mean, if you're pretty proficient, like it's not that much of a struggle to kind of loop those, but it's extra added time that you don't have to do. But with these, I'm not sure how many they said, there was a pretty big number of royalty-free tracks that you would be able to use in your projects. You don't have to do anything. You just drag it, align it to how long you want it to be, and it automatically adjusts. They have a bunch of new dynamic backgrounds, which you can also customize. And of course, if you wanna cut yourself out and put yourself on these backgrounds, it's so easy to do now. Here it is. Okay, third-party content coming soon. It doesn't say when, but this means eventually, it'll be happening. So we will be able to use plugins, so I can't wait for that. Also pretty cool, they have an added pro camera mode now. So when you go in and you use your iPad in pro mode, like you can basically shoot and edit directly from it. It now will give you a focus feature so you can set your focus. It also has a white balance so you can go in and change the white balance if you want it to be different than what the camera automatically does. You'll be able to edit ProRes RAW, and of course you do have some advanced coloring features. You are able to shoot in log and edit those as well. And cinematic mode, this is kind of interesting. I know this was something that they had been talking about when they first launched cinematic mode. Editing cinematic mode on the iPad feels so natural. So if you do shoot something and you wanna change the focus, in here, it's very, very easy to do so. You just basically touch what you wanna have focused and you can also keyframe that. So if you wanna do a rack to focus, which is kind of cool, it'll give you a very cinematic look and it's wild what kind of content you can actually just shoot on a phone nowadays. And here's one of the screenshots of what it looks like to export so you're able to change all of the settings and then we have the send to Mac. And again, like I said, once you send it to Mac, there's no going back. So don't forget it. A lot of the complaints that I saw this morning was about the price, the fact that they are making this a subscription. A lot of people were saying, well, I'm a student, I can't afford that. I'm just gonna tell you that I was also a student once and I literally had no money, but I would find, somehow, I would find four freaking dollars to go buy lattes that I could not afford. So when I put it into that sort of perspective, and when I was in school, buying software was absurdly expensive. Like Photoshop was like thousands of dollars. And I was just so grateful because I was in school, I was able to use the school licenses. Right now, so many things are subscription-based, like with Premiere, also subscription-based. For Photoshop, all of these things. I understand where a lot of you guys are coming from, that you don't want to have to pay another subscription fee, but all things considered, how powerful this is, and depending upon what you're doing with this, most people are probably using this for production, content creation, and this is a small investment into your business, into your creation. So for comparison, Final Cut Pro is $300 and Compressor is $50. But that, I mean, I don't even remember when I bought Final Cut last, like a very long time ago, and I've been continually getting those updates. So if you are buying an M1 or an M2 iPad, you're gonna be wanting to use it to its full potential. So if this is something that you want, I mean, that's how much it is, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to say, like, it is what it is. At this point, for me, like it is a business expense. And from what I've seen, like the app is so good. Like, <laughs> skip your Starbucks for the next two days and you'll be good to go. So as for iPads, it will be on the M1 or the M2, the fifth or sixth generation iPad Pro, the 12.9 or the 11 inch, or the iPad Air fifth gen, and it has to be running iPad OS 16.4 or later. So that's kind of just a first look at the Final Cut Pro for the iPad. I have been editing since 2005 on Final Cut, so I have seen a lot 
and it's really exciting to see it come to the iPad. Obviously there are limitations. The fact that you aren't able to use an external drive, that for me might be limiting because a lot of my content I do edit off of multiple drives and I am editing multiple projects at a time, which do have pretty big file sizes. But this is the first iteration of Final Cut on the iPad. So like this is like, we're basically starting from like version one. It is a reimagined version of Final Cut that we all know and I'm excited about this because this next generation of editors, which a lot of you are probably watching this right now, you edit a lot on your phone, you edit on the go, you're editing on your iPads, on touch devices, editing needs to change. I edit a ton on my phone and a lot of things are shifting that way, like watching this younger generation edits and creates, you guys are all editing on touch. So this really is just a natural progression and as someone who's been editing for so long, I'm excited about it. I love to edit, I love to be able to just story tell and just take a bunch of footage that otherwise may just be trash and turn it into something incredible. And I think that's the power of editing, the power of storytelling, and it's really giving back to people the power to create and tell whatever story it is that they wanna tell. Well, thank you guys for watching. This was really fun, and I'm so excited to actually get to be able to really test this out. So let me know if you guys have any questions. You can leave them in the comments below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.